Here's another one which may have slipped a few people by. It's the Atari Jaguar. Now, initially, this console was released with the slogan, Do the Math, because by the actual selling point of it, it was a 64-bit interactive multimedia system. Now, the biggest problem with this is them saying it's 64-bit. And if you break it down, it isn't actually 64-bit. So, them saying, do the math, well, why don't they try doing the math when they released it about the actual price tag that was included whilst purchasing this particular console? As I said, it was sent out as a rival for the Mega Drive and the SNES to replace them. It did outsell the 3DO, but I'm afraid it really, really didn't overshadow. It was overshadowed by the unfortunate lack of computer games or the quality of them. But what I will do is I'll give you a quick rundown of what Atari's done, what they've done in the past. They are a successful company, and unfortunately, this was the last console that they made. But that's the Atari. This is the Jaguar, and I'll give you a quick rundown of the past, and then I'm going to show you all the games I've got on it. And it may not be pretty, but hey, neither am I. So let's take it from there and see where we go. Now, Atari have always produced uh, good quality software, and they also did some good quality consoles and home computers. Now, one of the best ones I think to call to mind is the 2600, which was an excellent computer. I think it was one of the uh, longest running consoles there is in history. Maybe wrong, but yes, it, it had a long life, let's say that. And they tried to replace it with the 5200. Unfortunately, the thing flopped. So we went back to the 2600, which continued to live on well past 5200 and ceased to exist. Now, when they started with the Jaguar, it was a project between two uh, different computers which they were going to release. One was the 32-bit uh, computer called the Panther, and the other one was the Jaguar. And the work on the Jaguar finished off faster than the Panther, so they cancelled the Panther and focused on the Jaguar. Now, its uh, claim to fame was apparently 64-bit. Now, it wasn't actually 64-bit. It had a 32-bit processor. The actual 64-bit part of it came from a graphics accelerator, which relied on the console to run it. So then it was running at 32-bit to power a 64-bit graphics accelerator. And gets rather confusing. I'm not so established with the ins and outs, but needless to say, it wasn't as powerful as they initially made out. Atari even put their name to a handheld console, which we see here is the Lynx. And I'll get this out of the box just to show you. But I mean, my goodness. Look at the size of the thing. Apparently, the selling point for the Lynx is you can swap it over if you're left or right handed. But since I'm right handed and the other way worked quite fine for me, I don't really care about that aspect. It was a great little handheld console, technically advanced over the Game Boy. The only problem was that um, whilst playing this, with the amount of batteries this thing took and it et up because of the colour screen, you had probably about 20 minutes play before the thing was flat. So, a not a very handy handheld console to have on a long trip, is it? Unless you only intend to play for 20 minutes. There you go. As I said, it was a good handheld if you could plug it into the mains, making it there by a console. Another reason why I think that the Atari Jaguar failed is the horrible control pad. Now, you take a look at it. It's got the standard buttons. Now, if we just cut that short there, it's kind of fine, isn't it? Like a Mega Drive. Oh, no! A numeric keypad. Let's not forget that. So, every time you want to use this flipping thing, you've got to attach this. And the bloody... No. They're supposedly... Uh, a piece of crap. So, yeah. And you can understand why the controllers aren't great, and they feel like they're made out of chipboard. Also, unfortunately for the Atari Jaguar, it didn't have a very large back catalogue of games. As you can see, I mean, these are all the games that I own on it. And most of them, i.e. Flashback and a very poor interpretation of Doom, uh, you can find on the Mega Drive. But I endeavour for this review to do all of the games that I own, so you can see really, really how unfortunately atrocious the console was. But I still brought one.